We know that sin is evil, but is every evil thing also a sin? One of our viewers asked some pretty serious questions about evil and sin, so this is a three sunburst episode. To learn the answers to these big questions, stick around. Hello, my name is Father Ambrose Little, and I teach philosophy at the Dominican House of Studies. Welcome to Aquinas 101, Big Questions, Little Answers, the series where I do my best to answer your big questions about philosophy, theology, and more. Our viewer asks, what is the distinction between evil and sin? From my reading of St. Thomas, evil is a privation of the good. While sin is not simply a deficiency, it is an act. This makes it seem like evil is passive. Or better yet, what is the relationship between evil and sin? Can we do evil or just sin? If we can do evil, how can we do a privation? What specifically is being deprived? Order? Fullness of the thing? These are some pretty detailed questions, but I think we can break this down into four principal questions. One, what is evil? Two, what is the difference between evil and sin? Three, is it possible to do an evil act without it being a sin? And four, can one do evil when evil is a privation? Turning to the first question, we ask, what is evil? In the Thomistic tradition, but really in the vast majority of philosophical traditions that take up this question, evil is considered to be a privation. What does that mean? A privation is an absence of something that ought to be there. Now, not every absence is evil. For instance, when we look at a donut, we realize that the donut hole is a part of most donuts. This hole is an absence, but nevertheless a beloved feature of the donut shape. It may be an empty place in the donut, but it is not evil because it is an empty place that is supposed to be there. Privations are emptiness or absences of things that ought to be there but are not. For example, the absence of food when you are hungry is an evil. The bursting of a pipe due to weakness of the metal is also an evil. Illness is an evil because health is the proper state of a living body. These are things that ought to be there but are not. What then is the relationship between evil and sin? They are related to one another as a genus is related to a species. We can say that every sin is evil, but not every evil thing or action is a sin. St. Thomas tells us that sin is, quote, nothing else than a bad human act, end quote. What this definition indicates is that sin is a kind of human action. Evil is broader than human actions because states of affairs can be evil Non-human actions and activities can be evil, and other things like that. So sin only applies to a subset of evils. Human actions are bad when they are somehow deficient, either in the end of the action, the object of the action, or in the circumstances of the action. For more details on this, please watch Father Thomas Petrie's video on vice and sin. So sin is an action or an inaction where we don't do something we ought to do. Is it possible to do an evil action without it being a sin? Well, yes, although what we mean by that has to be qualified. For instance, there are evils that can come about by non-rational actions of the body. For instance, a heart attack can result from a blockage in the arteries. This is an evil, and the attack comes about from the lack of proper action in the body. This is not a sin on your part, but it is an evil insofar as it harms you. Or another example is that of cancer. Cancer is often the result of cells in the body that grow out of control in such a way as to harm the body. This is evil and is the action of parts of your body, but is not a sin on your part. It is easy to see why actions that are not voluntary can be evil but not sin, but can an action be voluntary and evil but not a sin? I think so. Here's an example. Let's say it is a hot day and I want to cool down by drinking a milkshake. I take a sip of the milkshake and then undergo brain freeze. Brain freeze is painful and so is an evil, albeit a mild form of evil. My action, sipping the milkshake, caused a minor evil, but it was not a sin. 
That being said, the most notable evil actions that we do are, in fact, sins. Lastly, how is it possible to perform an evil act when it is a privation? The answer to that question is that we are performing some concrete act which is in some way deficient. So we are not doing nothing, but rather are doing something imperfectly. This imperfection can be found in many areas of the action. So it could be in the fullness of the act, or in the ordering of the act, or even in the circumstances around the act. There are many ways an action can be deprived and evil. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Big Questions, Little Answers. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, may God bless you and keep you in his grace. I hope that answers all your questions, but if not, please let us know by submitting your big questions using hashtag AskAFriar in the YouTube comments and on social media. And don't forget to like and share with your friends because it matters what you think. <music>